also need to really talk about obviously obviously mention the goat that is Lionel Messi in that performance in the flipping World Cup against France Argentina obviously won the World Cup I think most of you are aware of that and it was legitimately one of the best finals I've ever watched in my you know recent history um definitely I'm sure there were many other World Cups in the 60s 70s and 80s that were far better than other fans who are older than me can kind of remember but in this modern era this was may maybe one of the best ones with two very well balanced teams even though Argentina took a really early two goal lead until basically the 70th minute when France had wake up they were two very evenly matched teams going head to head two of their star players turning it on when it really mattered Messi obviously with France and Mbappe with France oh no, Messi sorry with Argentina and Mbappe with France and it was legitimately one of the best spectacles I've seen of the game it was honestly amazing to watch and I think as a story I think it was beneficial or a somewhat a uh, romantic way to end the World Cup or end maybe Messi's overall international journey with Argentina for him to be able to lift the World Cup and put to bed any maybe debate when it comes to who's better from Cristiano Ronaldo and you know Lionel Messi for me I've always favored Cristiano or Ronaldo because I think the reason why a lot of people focus on my reasoning why I think a lot of people like Cristiano Ronaldo vis-a-vis -vis Messi obviously he has a bit more personality to him and also I feel like Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo is more relatable in that he came to United a really flashy, skinny, scrawny kind of, you know, um, you know, unproductive winger when he came to United. And then under the, you know, coaching of McLaren and maybe, you know, was it McLaren? Maybe McLaren, somebody else, um, you know, mostly Sykes Ferguson, that sort of mentorship and whatnot. And obviously guided with all the kind of ex pros that are around him, like Rio Ferdinand and, you know, Roy Keane and whatnot, these great leaders. He was able in poor scores and whatnot. He was able to adapt his game and change his game and evolve his game into being this absolutely devastating, you know, winger forward hybrid thing that he was at United. And I always maintain even to this day, despite him having maybe a better goal record at Real Madrid. He was a, my favorite version of Ronaldo was definitely Man United. But I feel like a lot of fans see themselves in Ronaldo because he came as this flashy guy, really unproductive, and then he was evolved into this really amazing player after a while. So he wasn't as naturally gifted as a Messi, where you see videos of Messi when he's like, you know, 10 years old and stuff, running rings around players, you know, two years or four years older than him, which is absolutely obscene. But it's easy to tell someone like a Messi at that 12 years old stage where he's obviously going to become one of the world's greats if he continues on that trajectory. But for Ronaldo, I'm pretty sure he might, he's like many of us who play football where he may have had potential, but, you know, who, you know, it's not a lot of times that that potential of an average or like of a standard player will kind of go on to become one of the world's best. And you obviously did that. But, for the Messi story and for just the people who kind of doubted his talent, especially now in his older years, I feel like we've definitely seen a, a difference in the ability and the the ability to influence games. We've seen a real difference the older they've become because Ronaldo kind of relied a lot on his pace and his power, obviously, and some of his skill also. But once that pace and power left him, he became a little bit shaky, right? He didn't really look as effective on the pitch. But Messi has never always been about pace. There's always been a lot of brains involved in what he does. Obviously, the pace and his ability to dribble at speed in tight spaces and control and whatnot goes a long way. But still, fundamentally, the guy is an amazing footballer. Like, he can play as a number 10, can play as a number 8. You can see him dropping even further back and just playing this weird quarterback role and kind of using that as a way to kind of build from the defence but that has essentially allowed him to maybe prolong his career in terms of impact further. So maybe he might not end up playing for as long as Ronaldo. Maybe Ronaldo still got a couple more years and then he might end up playing until he's like 40 or 45, who knows. But I feel like Messi will have, still have a lot more impact on the bigger stages. And this is what we saw him doing for Argentina because he turned it on when they needed him the most and was able to deliver one of the standout performances that I've definitely seen in the World Cup. So I'm really happy for Messi, for sure. Obviously, you know, um, honourable mention goes to Mbappe also. I think he definitely proved in that World Cup that he definitely is that guy. I feel like a lot of people like myself who maybe thought Harry Kane could be on that kind of level saw the differences when it comes to when your country or when your team actually needs you in the clutch crunch moments when all the pressure's on your shoulder, when you know this is the only opportunity you have to really turn this game around and to really change the overall flow of the game. Mbappe did it. You know, um, France got a really um, fortunate penalty 
And then they were able to kind of claw that one goal back and that momentum and that kind of energy was what allowed them to get the second goal, which I think came in within a minute or so after the penalty. And that second goal from Mbappe was out of this world. The one-two with Marcus Toram and then the volley inside the box, one-touch finish. Like he could have actually taken, I think someone said it in the commentary, he could have actually taken a touch in the box and kind of took the ball a bit closer to the goal, especially considering how fast he is. And he still would have had a good opportunity to score, but he took it at the earliest point. And that finish, kind of volley side foot thing, very Terry Henry esque, was exquisite to watch. So that was an incredible performance. And then, of course, finishing the, the hat trick um, goal with obviously the third goal at the end. Um, also, Kula Munai. Kula Kolo Munai. Is that how you pronounce his name? Or Kolo Munai. Or how do you pronounce his name? I think it's Congolese origin for France. He made a real difference too when he came on. Mark Storm and him did a real difference. You can see he really had the bit between his teeth. He really wanted to put on a good, strong World Cup final performance. And for sure, that's definitely elevated his um, kind of appeal and definitely increased his price tag if he ends up leaving. I think he plays for Frankfurt. But overall, a stellar game. I enjoyed every bit of it and absolutely loved it. And I can't actually wait for the American World Cup. That's going to be the next one, right? I think it's 2026. And that's going to think all over the United States. It's going to be pretty interesting to see how they um, work that out and how they get that sorted in terms of logistics and letting people kind of travel between stadiums and whatnot. But that should be a pretty decent affair also. Um, I feel like the discourse around some guys out there, I think there's been a lot of people, I think specifically like, you know, the gay side of social media and girls and stuff, especially on my side of stuff when it comes to high fashion Twitter, when it comes to gay Twitter or queer Twitter and stuff, who have been really upset about the World Cup because it's been, you know, their timelines have been flooded with guys just spazzing out about World Cup stuff and a lot of them were elated, elated, so over elated that the World Cup is finally over. But I find some of the straight dudes who go out of their way to, you know, say they're not into sports. I find that really odd. I don't actually get that. Like, how does that happen? Because for me, I'm not sure if you're, if you're the same, but if you are heterosexual, for the most part, the only way you make friends is really through sports or through maybe music or through maybe video games. When I was growing up, those are usually the three main things that you make you know, friends with. And usually you don't essentially like those things, but you might, you just do them because you want to hang out with your friends. But I feel like a lot of the people that are saying the, you know, the, the kind of hot takes of like, oh, I'm glad the World Cup's over because it's corny, because it's lame, because football's boring. It's like, it's legitimately one of the greatest sports in the world, in my opinion. I don't think you're going to get a better spectacle than that game against Argentina and France in the World Cup final in Qatar. Like that was a legitimate, legitimate blockbuster TV. Like two goals ahead of Argentina, um, if France score a penalty on the 70th minute. Like they were legitimately, you know, in some sort of malaise. There was, you know, there was rumours that they were, you know, infected with some sort of poison, that the whole camp were caught some virus or some cold that they didn't want to speak about. They legitimately woke up in the centre of minute, got a fortunate penalty, were able to claw back a goal, and then that gave them momentum to get a second brilliant goal. And then Messi scores a third, I think maybe an extra time to make it, you know, three two, and you're suddenly thinking, okay, Argentina going to win. Then France pull one back again with another penalty. Then we think, oh my god, this is gonna continue going on. And then you have one of the best penalty shoot actually you've ever seen. Also, it was a brilliant Amy Martin team's performance of Patina sticks brilliant so I can't understand if you're a straight dude how you can legitimately say entertainment wise again you don't need to like football but entertainment wise not liking it is weird like I don't know what those guys are doing I really would like to know actually if you're watching this or if you're listening to this and you are a dude who never really cared for football what were you doing beforehand like what how did you make friends then because I can't think of anything else outside of video games sports as a general thing and what I, I think I've got the other thing I said but I can't think of any other things outside of that that would legitimately allow you to hang around with guys and make friends and whatnot and whatever it may be. It doesn't necessarily work that way. Maybe when you're older, it kind of changes and you start to meet people in pubs and bars or galleries or other, you know, hobbies and interests that you may have and different, you know, scenarios like you might have, you know, good close group of friends at work that you hang out with all the time. And that might be just because you share a commonality that you work in the same place or whatnot, or you're into the same brands, or like, you know, you know, high fashion Twitter, or that sort of community stuff might be there, but when you're growing up from the ages of like 5 to 13 or 15, how else do you make friends if you're a straight lad, like, without sports and a video games, so like, how could you not like it, or maybe some people, they started off liking it, and then when they get older, they're like, oh, I'm, I'm out of love with it, but I feel like a lot of these hot tech McGee's, when it comes to, oh, I'm glad the football's over, I'm glad the World Cup's over, most of them are just like, either trying to appease the hoes 
right? Or they're trying to appease the gays, which is a new thing now, because gays are really cool. You want to be, you want to be down with the queer community. So they're either trying to get, they're trying to gay bait. They're trying to, you know, kind of get, get the hose on side, or they're just trying to be different for a different sake. But I can't understand how any other straight lad could legitimately hate football or hate sports in general. Like what else were you doing to find other male friends? Like legit. Or were you one of those weirdos that had loads of girlfriends when you were like in secondary school, which is always bizarre in my opinion. It's like, why would you want to hang out with girls at that age? You legitimately thought they were like, you know, covered in leggies and whatnot, right? Um, and you just were covered in snot yourself. And you just wanted to kick balls at each other and maybe give each other flipping wedges and whatnot or slap each other's balls, which is, you know, not very homoerotic, but kind of homoerotic, but you know what I mean. But yeah, I find all that kind of hot text really odd and really bizarre to handle. But hey, what can you do?